OWCS just kicked off in North America and EMEA. We'll talk about Asia in just a little minute. But the open Swiss stage happened for the first time, the first stage of four. And we've got the top six teams for both North America and EMEA. So let's talk about it and what to expect as we go further on into the group stage. First things first, let's get some uh, housekeeping done. Overwatch was in the open uh, Swiss stage for North America and we went six and three. You know, we, we had high hopes, but we ended up 53rd going six and three. So we did okay, but eh, there were some really good teams. And you know, sometimes you lose and that's okay. We didn't have a lot of time scrimming. We'll come back next stage even stronger. So then hopefully we can make it to the group stage. But regardless of that, it was a lot of fun. If you want to check out those matches, go over to my YouTube, go to the live tab. I re streamed all of my uh, matches. It was, it was awesome. You couldn't have asked for a better squad to do it with. As much as we didn't win, we had fun. And that's what's important. Well, let's talk about the teams that had fun and won because we can head over to North America. First things first, there was a crazy amount of drama that happened within the North American region. Rost Apocalypse hit us two hours be uh, before the uh, signups happened, or at least closed. Uh, we had notable player Sam end up disappearing from the scene. If you want to go look that up, you can go find uh, details on that. But essentially, that left this power vacuum of players and teams. We had uh, M80, an organization looking for a new team, and they went on to sign Hawks team. But there were lots of players moving all over the place. It was absolute chaos. Hilarious to watch from a distance. We're not in the Overwatch League anymore. This is just memes and vibes. That's what we're running off of these days. But let's talk about the teams that ended up making it through the Swiss stage. We had Toronto Defiant being the team that goes 9-0 and in North America. They uh, obviously have a great team. Three of the uh, five players from the Florida Mayhem, who were the championship winners last year, Merit, Someone, RuPaul, all playing together, and you pair them up with Sugar Free and Vega, you're going to have a good time. So they were by far the best team in North America, but then obviously a lot of other great teams. We have WD40. This is sort of uh, where a lot of players found homes uh, in the chaos of everything that happened. Timeless. Uh, is also here, M80, as I talked about, Hawks team. We got Maryville University. So lots of great players, lots of great teams. Daybreak is a team that overwatched our team actually lost to. They're a really solid team as well. So this is the North American squad, and this is what the four groups look like. So to give context, if you've forgotten of how this works, so we had the uh, open Swiss stage. The next round is the group stage. So there are now four groups of four teams. The top two teams of the four groups will then make it out and go to an eight team double elimination bracket. So the top two teams of all these groups will make their way out. Because this is based on seeding from the Swiss bracket, it doesn't seem like it's too top heavy or one group is the group of death. I'm sure there will end up being one that's a lot more competitive or at least one a lot more one-sided, but this is what we have right now. So excited to see how this will go. These matches for the group stage will kick off this weekend. I'm going to be co-streaming a lot of the matches. So make sure to check me out on Twitch or YouTube. I've been streaming on YouTube as well. You guys can come see me talk about the matches as they happen. So let's head over to the European region. The European region had the exact same thing. EMEA also had a 512 Swiss bracket. Twisted Minds, a team that you should be familiar with if you've been watching this channel. Uh, went 9-0, took the number one seed, great team. Our spray check, it's a lot of the Finnish World Cup team, plus Kai and Kevsta, <laughs> nothing to scoff at, uh, ended up be, uh, playing, and they were also very good taking the number two seed, but then you got a lot of other teams. I think there's a lot of high-quality teams in the European region. While I think North America might potentially be very top-heavy, uh, I think Europe is... Uh, I would say a lot more consistent with their rosters. We also have the uh, London Spitfire roster plus Funny Astro got signed by Space Station Gaming. So excited to see how they're going to do as well. Uh, interesting enough as well, there aren't a lot of Korean imports in the European region while there is somewhat common in North America, even though we got Checkmate and Iziaki playing for a uh, Saudi Arabian team. So this is going to be the four groups uh, in EMEA. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one, exactly like North America. It's seeded, so... We'll see how it goes. Worth noting, something that was really cool we saw over the two tournaments that happened is there's a lot of different things being played. A lot of Tracer and a lot of Lucio. But other than that, there's almost some disagreements between the regions of what is best. 
Uh, you're seeing some teams play Doomfist. You're seeing some teams play some Diva. A lot of Junker Queen. Even some teams playing Ramatra. So a lot of different ideas being played depending on the map. So meta's still up in the air. A lot to play for. People playing to their own team's strength rather than just everyone playing the exact same thing, which is how Overwatch should be played. I think we can all agree on that. So let's talk about what the both the North American and the EMEA region are playing for. So first of all, the top 16 teams... Uh, they all got points. Uh, if we see here, we can go 9th and 12th got 50 cha uh, cha circuit points. I was going to call them championship points, but they're circuit points. Uh, and then 13th to 16th got 25 circuit points. Remember, these circuit points are attached to players and the team's average from their players is what their circuit points are. Every point matters. What they're playing for right now is for points to be able to go to DreamHack Dallas, go to DreamHack Stockholm at the end of the year. Circuit points is how you're going to punch your ticket there, at least in North America and EMEA. But if we go over to this championship bracket as well, North America and EMEA will be, still be playing separately during this part. And this is going to happen towards the end of March, as you can see here. Um, and at this point, teams are going to be paying for $75,000 in a double elimination bracket. So... The eight teams are going to be coming out of the groups in both regions. They're playing for $75,000 each. And these are the circuit points they're playing for. 250 circuit points for coming first. If you win this, you're in a very good spot to be able to make it to DreamHack Dallas in the middle of the year. So this is what everyone is playing for. Both North American and EMEA are going to get there eventually. There's going to be many weeks of Overwatch happening each weekend. So keep an eye out for those in both North America and EMEA. So let's talk about the Asia region because it gets... It gets a lot more convoluted. But so everything that I just told you about North America and EMEA and their formatting, forget it. Circuit points don't exist. All those types of things don't exist. They're doing a qualification system for DreamHack Dallas and Stockholm very differently to the way North America and EMEA are doing it. So Japan, uh, let's just go over the teams real quick. I don't know much about a lot of Japanese players. Varel were the Japanese team that played in the Overwatch World Cup. Uh, that, that'd be the team that you'd think of the most, but there are a couple of players that should also stand out a little bit. But I don't know too much about this region as a whole. They're doing a group stage into a last chance qualifier, into all these types of things. The same thing is happening in Korea. Let's look at the Korean teams because I think this has a lot more players that you'll recognize. We got... Uh, uh, WAC, I, I, is this called like, I don't know what this WAC stands for, but Lip, He Sang, Junbin, Max, Churong, Shu. Pretty good. Decay, Choice One, Kellen, Kalios, Teru, Maka. Pretty sick. Team Falcons, Proper, Stalker, Smurf, Hanbin, Chio, Fielded, Sir Majid. It's a pretty good team. Uh, from the game, Flora, Alfie, Bellas, Rhea, Banaf, Violet, Finn. Then we got Yeti, Knife, Viper, Donghack, Bliss, Irony. Sixth, Runaway, Prophet, Zest, Mag, Lee J, Gone, Vigilante. There was actually a really good match between Team Falcons and Runaway that happened, if you wanted to check that out. Then we go further down, Pokerface, Becky, Proud, Finale, Peppy, Jasmine, Faith, Simple, Iris. Like, bro, Korea has so many good teams. Like, these teams are freaking crazy. So they're doing their own group stage. These matches have been going on over the last little bit. So keep an eye out for those if you want to go back and check some of those out. But they're going to be playing their own little internal group stage. And then they're going to also be qualifying. I'll explain that in just a second. So we go over to the Pacific region. Uh, there are some t names that should ring a bell, but nowhere near to the degree. It's kind of like the, the Japanese region. They're kind of a hodgepodge. You know, Adam from Australia over here uh, on Honeypot, but... They're also doing their style different. They're just doing a double elimination bracket. They're not actually doing any uh, like group stages or anything. So the Asia region is kind of the wild, wild west. But the thing that you need to know is how are they going to qualify for DreamHack Dallas? So essentially what's happening is from those three regions, they're all sending a certain number of teams. So Korea is sending three teams. Japan is sending two teams. Pacific is sending two teams. And then there is a wild card uh, for each of the regions to send one last team. It'll likely be the Korean team. Um, so essentially what's going to happen is all these teams are going to be sent. They're going to be playing for $60,000 in an eight-team double elimination bracket. And the top two teams will qualify for DreamHack Dallas. And they will play up against the top three teams from North America and the top three teams from EMEA for when all of that is done and dusted with the circuit points, right? So very different systems, but they're all going to converge at DreamHack Dallas. Three teams from North America, three teams from EMEA two teams from Asia. 
So that's essentially where we are right now. Okay, so that's a crash course on everything that's happened so far in OWCS and what's happening with all the other regions. Starting this weekend, this upcoming weekend, is going to be the North American and EMEA uh, group stages. And I believe that is when the broadcasts are starting as well. So previously in the Swiss stage, everything was only just you know streamed or co-streamed by teams or players. There will be an official broadcast actually following teams. So if you want to just watch the official thing, keep an eye out for that. I'm going to be co-streaming all of these types of things, getting into as many matches as I can, maybe just co-streaming the main broadcast as well. But we will be able to show gameplay, unlike we have in the past when Overwatch League existed, where we just had to like black out the screen and show like only the timer. We will be able to show the gameplay. We'll be able to have everything. It's going to be a great time. Make sure to check it out. OWCS has been awesome so far in terms of just feeling more open, feeling more fun, feeling more fresh. It feels less, I don't know, everything has red tape and you just have to watch and you'll enjoy it. And it's a lot more, hey, this is what competitive Overwatch should feel like. So make sure to check it out. Appreciate you guys for watching. Hope I was able to inform you a little bit. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can watch my future broadcasts, my live broadcasts that have been happening on YouTube. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Twitch. Love you very much. And I'll see you guys next time.